Welcome back. We are continuing to discuss with another interesting subject, which, which is called cerebral edema. Uh, the most basic definition of cerebral edema is swelling of the brain. And cerebral edema categorizes into either uh, vasogenic, cellular, osmotic, and interstitial. Vasogenic at the same time uh, can be divided in, into or have sub compartments like trima, vascular ischemia, and interstitial uh, obstructive hydrocephalus. As you see, volumes of the brain uh, components or uh, cranial components like brain matter, blood, and cerebrospinal fluid, the three main components inside the skull. And uh, relative uh, volumes like brain matter, 1,400 milliliter, blood, mostly circulating blood volume, which is uh, 150 milliliters, and uh, cerebrospinal fluid, 150 milliliters. And it renewing uh, through the day, like in 24 hours, it could achieve the total volume of uh, 480 or uh, roughly 500 milliliters by absorbing and producing and make internal circulation. And treatment is hyperventilation, osmotherapy, diuretics, corticosteroids, and uh, surgical decompression. So let's start one by one. It's uh, etiology like neurological and non-neurological from neurological part it could be tumors hypoxia infection metabolic derangements acute uh, hypertension and from uh, non-neurological uh, uh, it could be hepatitis reyes syndrome as from administration of aspirin for children less than five years, carbon monoxide poisoning, lead poisoning, high altitude cerebral edema, and pseudo tumor cerebri. And you have to know that it affects all age groups, uh, genders, and ethnic groups. It's not choosing uh, any special categories. Pathophysiology so, vasogenic cerebral edema is a most common form. Uh, encountered and caused by the disruption of the blood-brain barrier. Ions and proteins flow more freely into the extravascular space and causes osmotic draw of fluid into the brain interstitium. So, as a mechanism, you have to understand that uh, blood is going through the vessels and the substances like uh, ions, proteins, uh, glucose, and anything else can go from uh, the vessel to the uh, extravascular or interstitial space. And if this mechanism is uh, distorted and more substances or uncontrolled amount of substances go to the intra, uh, extravascular or interstitial space, it uh, can lead to uh, edema. Vascular endocellular growth factor glutamate and leukotrienes are uh, produced locally uh, increase vessel permeability and all these factors uh, counted plus a uh, lack of tight endocellular cell junctions a low end influx of protein aseos uh, solute and fluid in the brain parenchyma particularly in the white matter so cognitive impairment uh, resulting in it appears firstly there is uh, cellular and cytotoxic edema and interstitial edema. So cellular and cytotoxic edema affects glial, neuronal, and endocellular cells within the brain. Interstitial edema is from outflow of cerebrospinal fluid from the intraventricular space to the interstitial areas of the brain. The fluid accumulates in the uh, extracellular space of mostly the white matter as we discussed previously and causing the cerebral edema. Osmotic edema stems from derangements affecting osmolarity, like hyponatremia and diabetic uh, ketoacidosis. For, uh, so 
hyponatremia or low sodium inside the vessel. We are discussing everything with vessel, which is uh, substances which are inside and outside. So if inside the vessel osmolarity is low, which is mostly influenced by sodium or uh, natrium, it means that water from uh, intravascular uh, side will go as a gradient portion to the side where uh, osmolarity is higher. And it is the interstitium. So in this case, it uh, can appear as uh, cerebral edema from hyponatremia. History and physical examination. So cerebral edema can uh, even be asymptomatic, but we have to diagnose this as early as possible. And history of trauma, hypoxic event, cancer, metabolic disease uh, can uh, tell us that it is a possible uh, scenario of cerebral edema that will appear soon. Localized cerebral edema and diffuse cerebral edema. Localized cerebral edema appears with weakness, visual disturbances, seizures, sensory changes, diplopia, and other neurolog neurological disturbances. In times that uh, diffuse cerebral edema appears with headache, nausea, vomiting, lethargy, altered mental status, confusion, coma, seizures, cranial neuropathy, coma, and even tears. So you have to know all of this possible scenarios and detect them early. Evaluation. So patient coming to the emergency department and presenting with malignant middle cerebral artery stroke, for example, it is administered admin, admitted immediately to the intensive care unit and following neurological exam closely by a neurologist. And if you see the altered mental status and fixed or dilated pupil, you should do or should undergo immediately a CT scan of the brain. And it can show a demo and visible area of low density and loss of gray white matter differentiation. So uh, differentiation be between two uh, tissues uh, is not visible. If flattened uh, GRI is, or narrowed sulci uh, or compression of the ventricles is seen, this suggests increased in cranial, intracranial pressure. Also, if a uh, patient allow and stay calm and not move or under anesthesia, uh, we can uh, make MRI and it will show hyperintensity within the brain. If increased intracranial pressure, uh, is a concern for, uh, from the cerebral edema, intracranial uh, pressure monitoring or ventricular stomach may be needed. So installing an, an external drainage of the cerebrospinal fluid with uh, monitoring. The most important part of all of the pathologies I, I think uh, from my side that is treatment like uh, preventing further injury from the cerebral edema and remediate the original insult causing or uh, the, the cause of the cerebral edema. So a correction of metabolic derangements like controlling hypertension, removing intracranial lesions or shunting hydrocephalus, administration of glucocorticosteroids or glucocorticoids, have shown potential benefit in cerebral edema secondary to vasogenic edema. So an ongoing region will help you with uh, handling the treatment. Avoidance of hypotonic uh, fluids is a strong recommendation and the only one fluid that is uh, hypotonic and known at this moment is uh, a glucose and not as uh, gl glucose or dextrose 5 or 10 percent have low density, but after the consumption of glucose uh, remained uh, a low density of uh, solute inside the vessel. Positioning, so uh, uh, reaching uh, or uh, lifting head by 30% per degree in comparison with uh, uh, other parts of body. 
hyperosmolar therapy, antipyretics, sedatives, paralytics, modulation of uh, carbon dioxide pressure and surgical intervention. Hyperosmolar therapy mean administration of um, of diuretics, antipyretics like decreasing temperature to normal range, sedatives for decreasing uh, brain activity. Paralytics is a muscle uh, relaxants for uh, modulation of of patient breathing and make it synchronize it with a uh, uh, ventilatory machine. Osmotic agents like drawing fluid intravascularly and decrease cerebral edema. Osmotic uh, agents as known as manitol and uh, the compressive craniectomy, which is uh, life-saving in any cases for patient. Other supportive treatments include uh, extraventricular drainage of the cerebrospinal fluid, avoiding of straining and coughing, uh, straining mostly by increasing intra-abdominal pressure and uh, coughing as well produces this mechanism and increase uh, pressure, intracranial pressure of the cerebrospinal fluid. Introducing uh, paralysis in patients who are intubated and keeping the neck, stra uh, neck straight and elevated to allow for the brain and drain with ease. Introducing coma with barbiturates or barbituric coma known, minimizing PEEP, which uh, PEEP is a positive and expiratory pressure, and administering uh, PEEP through the ventilatory machine as a regime of, venti uh, regime of ventilation. It decreases... Uh, it increases uh, or allows some pressure to be at the end of expiration and decrease in this way uh, drainage of the blood and increase pressure of the blood. Increasing pressure of uh, the venous blood coming from inferior and upper part of body, uh, of course from uh, brain as well, and making drainage uh, a little bit uh, less effective and inducing hypothermia to suppress cerebral metabolism and activity. Differential diagnosis should be done with uh, shaken baby syndrome. You know this shaken baby syndrome where a baby is taken to one of parents or anyone else and is shaken uh, toward and, uh, and backward and it is done very quickly and can appear some uh, uh, some hematomas or a disruption of uh, brain, uh, brain uh, blood um, barrier. Toxin poisoning, stroke, metabolic derangement, seizure or, and tumors. Uh, about complications, so range from mild to cognitive impairment to this should appear in in most of cases, and we should pay attention for this. Untreated severe, uh, cerebral edema is fatal due to brain and brain stem compression and herniation, and vital signs uh, and vital uh, functions like respiration and blood and, and heart uh, uh, contractility is uh, a main things we have uh, to take in account. So, can cause diffuse brain injury, precipitate seizures, in some cases create large area of ischemic brain tissue. Thank you for your attention and have a great time guys.